We have here the, the Watford District Trades Council and I, don't, I can't quite see what's on that flag. It's the Communist Party, OK, right, OK. So, my first question to you has to be, are you here as a supporter or a protester against Bilderberg? I'm a protester. <laughs> Absolutely, a protester. Are you sure? Right, OK. Well, let me put it... Let, no, let me put it to you, let me put it to you that... Um, well, I'll ask you first, what is it you're actually protesting? Ah, neoliberalism, just that, and what it's doing to social democracy. And would, you, would you define social democracy? I'll define social democracy? Well, basically, Keynesian economics. OK, so you would class the people at the top of the hill as capitalists, would you? Absolutely, yes. Well, if I was... If, a well, representative of capitalist organisations or um, politicians that are in favour of neoliberalism. Right, well if I was to say to you there are actually fascists who are in that hotel, yes. what would you say to that? Um, I'm not convinced about them being fascist, but I think um, uh, if there was a role in that direction, they would certainly jump on the bandwagon. Well, I'll put it to you that um, Mussolini's own definition of, of um, fascism was corporate fascism. So yes. what well, we, what well, we, I'm open to that. Yes, I'm open to that. That's okay. So, so what we have, yeah. by definition, are corporations up in the hill up there, um, who are controlling, manipulating governments, actually running countries. So they are, by definition, corporate fascists. Yes, that's fair enough. Yeah, oh, okay. I think so. Or, or mafia, or international mafia that we, you know, because it's secret, probably don't know that much about. I mean, that happens to be secret. I mean, I understand when they get there, these members that are attending have to almost swear some sort of oath that it's got to be secret, than not to say to anybody. And indeed, the press haven't been allowed in. OK, okay of course, they're under Chatham House rules. Uh, there are no minutes taken, there are no uh, recordings of anything. No, well, when you say there are no press allowed in, there are actually the head editors of the types of uh, Washington Post, New York Times are up there. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, they're running businesses, aren't they? Well, they're, they're getting their orders about what they can and cannot report. Now, I, th I think it was um, Rockefeller back in 1991 who said that he, well, he actually made a speech where he thanked the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time magazine, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, other uh, fine publications for uh, 40 years of secrecy, because without such secrecy, they wouldn't have been able to develop the plan for the world. Now, that, that was in 1991. Uh, Bill Clinton was at that Bilderberg meeting well before he was um, President of the United States and as are all Presidents and Prime Ministers of America and Britain um, attend these meetings prior to becoming the President or Prime Minister so they are selected a long time in advance to be put in that position. What would you say to that? I agree with that. Yeah, I think that's all right. I've, I've uh, had some understanding of those uh, historic events. Yes, that's fair enough. Okay. Um, I mean, you're, you're, you're actually uh, giving me a lecture rather than interviewing me, you know? <laughs> I'm just putting some points to you just to see how, how aware you are of actually what is happening in that building up there. Because you are aware that fascists have always run communism. Um... No, I'm not aware of that at all. Now, what do you mean communism? There isn't a communist in the world that would have said there's been communism anywhere. Well, or a communist uh, state. Well, but they do know, communists around the world do know that there is a transition period and it's going to take a long time and it's very difficult. And most of the problem is dealing with um, counter-revolutionaries. Once something democratic happens in the people taking over their own lives and taking over the capital that there is around that's produced by the people. Well, capital is labour. Yes. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean physical labour. I mean, you know, uh, wealth is created by labour. Yes. Physical labour. Yeah, and, it, and production. Bit, but, you know, carry on. I mean... Oh, well, yeah, well, not absolutely. I mean, you know, there's a, lo a lot of um, bright people that invent things and all the rest of it. <laughs> Well, of course there are, and then, and then they, they put that into a, a capitalist system and they, they seek to profit from it, which is fair, it's fair enough, isn't it? Well, that's what happens under capitalism, but I mean, you know, if, if, you, if you get tangled up with, uh, uh, with communist or Marxist literature, you'll find that um, there's surplus value. Where does it go? Well, it goes to these guys up there. That's, that's where it goes, yes, because... nothing to do with communist states that you're talking about. Communi you, you actually said that communists are fascist. No, 
I said fascism runs communism. What the what? Have you, well, okay. Well, we'll bring it into the modern day. Uh, have you actually heard of Agenda 21? No. Well, Agenda 21 is a is basically the, the Communist Manifesto put out by the United Nations. Okay, which states there'll be no private property, no private transport. Um, that includes house, car, everything. Uh, the state will be the, the nanny. They will supply your food. They will supply all the all the uh, resources you need to live. But that's it. That is it. The United Nations. Agenda 21. Why isn't it happening? It is happening. Where? That's, well, that's why all your water resources are privatised. That's why electricity companies are privatised. That's why Monsanto has control over seed production. Well, it's, it's, it's a Marxist uh, doctrine of the Communist Manifesto. <laughs> well, that's... Uh no, no, I can't. I can't see that. It's a, that, that, that that's a line I think is uh, somewhere along the line distorted. But who who funded communism? Who funded communism? What communism? I've just explained. There there has been no communism. What funded the Soviet, Soviet system then? Um, the resources in the land. Once the people uh, were able to uh, to use it freely and democratically. Who funded Karl Marx? Uh, what, in wine, do you mean? Because that would have been Engels, who was a capitalist. Who funded them financially? Well, you, you tell me, you see. Western, Western bankers. Western bankers. Uh, that's, that's why he's buried in London. Yes, I see. Yeah, yeah. Who funded Hitler? Who funded Hitler? Go on, Western bankers. Western bankers, yeah, absolutely. Yes. And then they, they set them against each other to bring about the European Union. Yes, possibly. Which is one of Marx's trading blocks. I don't, I can't see that. Why can't you see it? Look at, look at, look around you. They're now taken in Eastern European countries. And I, I, I speak to many Eastern Europeans, I've spent a lot of time over there. And they say to me, this is how we used to live under Stalin. And that's happening now? It's absolutely happening. It's coming to Britain. That's, that's what we're living under. We are living under a Stalinist type European Soviet Union. I see, yeah. And why is it called Stalinist? Well, Stalin, it's the Soviet Union, I'm talking about stolen U the Soviet Union, yes. which Stalin presided over, so as did Lenin. The Soviet Union at that time was having to deal with um, uh, Western interference and counter-revolutionaries, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was funded by Western bankers. The Soviet Union was funded by Western bankers. That America actually supplied grain and other um, foodstuffs to Russia during the, the Russian famine, uh, because they needed the Soviet system to remain in place long enough uh, that they could consolidate well, Eastern Europe. Yeah, well, that's, that, that, that's a very interesting. I mean, lighten, but so what, what do you think is the answer? The answer is to get rid of these people up there, completely. We get rid of these big corporations, all of it, and we go back to taking responsibility for our own lives. We don't need an ism to, to tell us how to live our lives. Like, we don't need anybody to control our lives either. I'm, I'm an individual. I, I can look after myself. I don't need somebody telling me what to do. No. Why is it anarchism? I'm an adult. I'm an adult. I can look after myself. I don't need the government telling me how to behave myself. Well, all I can say is, if you look around and you look at these um, police that have been recruited because of the size of themselves uh, from all over, which has cost a fortune, and also the actual security guards, um, I don't understand. I mean, even if, if these guys are just let loose, free, how are you going to cope with that? Just as nice individual looking after yourself. I mean, I find that very narrow. Well, there's, there's a thing called Magna Carta, yeah? And we have common law in this country still, as long as we can hold on to it. Common law simply states that you do no harm. You do no harm. That's common law. I agree with that. Absolutely. Well, if, if we do no harm to each other, what's the problem? We don't need that many police, do we? Under common law, if you do wrong, well, you, 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 you will receive retribution. But I do suggest if you, uh, if you went for a period of time under a system like that, with your nice little individual freedom, you'll find uh, a few kickbacks that you, you'd start res uh, regretting it. So, so, you're against individual, so you're against individual freedom? No, I'm not against individual freedom. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you, uh, you, on your path, you're going to have to beware of what's, what, where you're going. It you, seems a bit utopian. It seems well, a bit idealistic. Actually, you talk a bit romantic, indeed. I mean, you know, well, uh, for somebody for somebody we're waving the hammer and sickle with the Communist Party on it, yes. who doesn't know about Agenda 21, you really need to do a bit of reading. Yes. 
Because the United Nations, the United Nations was set up by the same bankers who funded Hitler and Stalin. That's the words the League of Nations. And they, they, create, they created and funded wars to bring that about. And they're doing it right now again for a world government. I had Michael Meacher here yesterday admit that that was a world government after he's spoken about democracy for 20 minutes. And I said to him, well, how can there be democracy if you're telling me that's a world government? Democracy is dead. Because nobody here voted for it. Yeah, well, I can agree with that. Yeah. Well, I'm so what? I'm not I'm not personally, I'm not trying to badge you, but I would really suggest that you look at Agenda 21. It's, it's, it's not, it's not... I don't know what I can do about it, and I don't know what, what um, advanced sort of political thinking from a socialist uh, 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 advantage can, can do about it in the circumstances. I'm not, I'm not saying the socialism is bad, there's a certain brand of it is okay, but the brand that's been given to us now is far from okay, and we all have to look... What is the brain of socialism that's given to us today? We are getting Stalinist uh, communism. That's what we're getting. Where? The European Union. The European Union? Oh, for God's sake. The European Union. I mean, what we're going to I mean, that is it up there. They created it. Yes, and they're maintaining it and defending it and they're going to make it even stronger. And it's this word austerity. Well, austerity is the only a term that's ever been used in war before. Now, would you, would you agree that war has been perpetrated on the people? Uh, well, the wars, uh, the last war, um, the, the Second World War, was probably the only time that I know that capitalism became democratic in, in, in some sense. Well, as, as I said to you just a minute ago, the First World War was, create, was brought about by, well, obviously by the, the so-called uh, assassination of Prince Ferdinand by a Rothschild agent. <laughs> And uh, they needed the First World War to get the League of Nations, which is what they wanted, which is the prototype world government. Then the Arab nations at that time uh, realised they were going to be screwed over and decided not to sign up to it. So the powers that be decided they would need another, another war to bring in the United Nations. And that's where we are today. And now where we are is we're going into austerity, uh, complete economic collapse. And they'll come up with a solution down the road that was, well, you know, the European Union didn't work, but what the solution is, is that we need a world government now to take care of everybody, the, the global nanny state under a communist um, diktat. I can't answer it. In fact, I haven't heard anything like this before. I don't know where you get it from. It well, seems to me that you, you, I don't know what you read. I don't know where you get your information from. I read, I read the history books that these guys in that hotel write themselves. Well, that's interesting. I know that uh, history can be bent one way or another according to what time it's, it's written and who writes it. I understand that. But why have you listened so intently? Because I care, I care about my family. I care about my family. I have, I have children, grandchildren, and I don't want them living under a communist socialist regime. So what do you want them living under? I want them to be free to do what they want to do with, within, within, within the tenets of do no harm. That's it. Well, that's very good. I, I, I wish you luck. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't mind it coming about tomorrow. But I, but I do see that there's, you, you, that there's, uh, there's avenues which are a bit risque at the moment. Once you establish a society like that, oh, you probably won't call it a society, though, will you? What would you call it? Of course it's a society. It's a corrupt society. I mean, there is no cohesion in it. What you're advocating is a corrupt one. This the society we live in is just completely corrupt from top down, not from the bottom up, from top. That we are the, are the people in your new society that won't be corrupt? Are the people that won't be? Ooh, I don't know. Possibly um, uh, a bit mentally retarded to the extent they might be dangerous. What would you do then to your to your free loving life with your children? They're they're always going to they're always going to be lawbreakers in, in, in any society. And we have to deal with them in a, in a legal, lawful manner. We, we have our, our own police services. The, uh, a, a mass of the nice people. And, and we, we, think, look, we've had enough of this. We use the courts. We use the courts the way they're supposed to be used and use the, the, the sound laws that are already in place under common law. And basically, do no harm in your, in your actions. Do no harm to people, people or property. That covers everything. It covers everything. If the, if the courts were working properly, we wouldn't have such a violent society because these people would not be in the streets. Well, you know about it, and you're well versed in it. How are you going to get this sort of way of life and your thoughts, which might be very grand, over to the mass of the people? 
That's what we're trying to do. We 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 do inter- with me. No, no, we didn't start with you. I've been doing this a long, long time. Uh, well, you well, just happen to be here. You just happen to be here with your flag, so I thought I'd come over and talk oh, to you. I'm, I'm, look, I'm not, I'm not having a go at you, seriously. But uh, I would seriously well, suggest, are. seriously suggest you read Agenda you're, 21. You're having a go at just about everything. I'm trying to... I'm trying you're, to you're having a go at um, uh, historical evolution and uh, 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 democracy gradually unfolding and then all of a sudden, after the Second World War, getting knocked back. Well, can I just put it to, can I just put it to you that... Um, you know, I'd urge you to read Agenda 21. Okay, oh, well, I think it's only about 350 pages. It's yes. not, it's not a huge document, yeah. and it's clearly, yes, it's, yeah, it's clearly written. Enough, but okay? I mean, you know, lots of writings and historical events are uh, misinterpreted and bent one way or the other. Well, this is a United Nations document. It's a United Nations document. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, it's been a pleasure. No, it hasn't. Oh, it hasn't. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Because no. I mean, but it's, a, it's a frank exchange of views, isn't it? Well, not really, because you're a highly educated person, obviously. Well, I, I didn't see you weren't. <laughs> okay, so so I suppose we'll leave it at that. We, we agree to disagree on, on whatever. Well, I don't know. I don't know whether we're but disagreeing or not, to be honest. But there's, there's no harm done. There's no harm done. We'll have a discussion. I don't think so at all. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>